Here's a quick summary of what just happened with Tesla earnings. Tesla earnings came in with a margin of 18.2% down from 19.1. We also got a bit of a solar warning. We were hoping, at least I was, hoping to see some kind of boost in solar deployments as maybe a leading indicator that uh, Enphase will do quite well. Although Tesla doesn't handle much regarding Enphase, given that they use different types of inverters. So maybe the sales priority for Tesla has been on vehicles rather than on solar. So it might be different at Enphase, but let's just say if solar was booming at Tesla, it'd probably be booming at Enphase as well. Something to keep in mind uh, for the solar industry in Enphase, it's still a bit in the doldrums and Tesla's reiterating that to us. Now, another thing that we thought was remarkable for Tesla, as everybody did, was free cash flow actually came in a lot stronger than anticipated. Free cash flow coming in at about a billion bucks, with two billion coming in for operating activities, and no crazy adjustments. It's not like we had some kind of weird one-time item in here that really propped up these numbers. In fact, when we looked at the income statement, we noticed that this was the lowest number of regulatory credits that Tesla has received with the highest number of sales in the last five quarters at least, which means it's potentially the lowest number of regulatory credits we've gotten from Tesla or for Tesla in quite a while. So it's very impressive that Tesla was able to beat adjusted EPS expectations at 81 cents, result at 91 cents, and Tesla was able to beat EPS expectations of 71 cents with a 78 cent beat. Well, a uh, result of 78%, uh, 78 cents, not a beat by that. But anyway, that's impressive given that the regulatory credits weren't actually that sexy this quarter. What was sexy though, uh, was this number right here, a 17% annualized bump, or sorry, 17% quarter over quarter bump in services revenue, maybe this is because we're starting to see some of that charging throughput come in, right? That annualizes to a 68% growth rate for services revenue and margins on services revenue are growing. Remember, we're not compounding because the average rate of services growth is much lower given that in prior quarters, you're looking at eight, 3.4 or 12% services growth. We did see a bump in AI spend here of 22% in the quarter. That's compared to a decline in AI spend between the fourth and the first quarter. Uh, sorry, I say AI spend. I labeled it as AI spend because I'm assuming it's AI spend. This is actually the research and development line. I'm calling it AI because I wouldn't be surprised if that's what gets talked about in the earnings call. We also showed this picture here and thought it was interesting that they covered up the Cybertruck in production here and they didn't cover up the Cybertruck in production in this photo, a little mysterious. Expecting more dojo production, which is fantastic. Expecting services revenue to climb, also excellent. A list of companies here announcing that expansion of the NACS, North American Charging Standard uh, usage, which is great. Here's your solar warning, causing that postponement of solar purchasing. What? Interest rates, of course. Then uh, what we also focused on heavily was this, uh, this idea that we'd like to get some color on when that Cybertruck is actually going to hit uh, release. Are we still going to get that this year? So we'll pay close attention to that in the earnings call. Notice here, what we found is compared to the Q1 report, the next gen platform item has been lined out as separate from the Roadster item as in development. And we saw Giga Berlin have its capacity bumped from 350 plus to 375. 4680 ramping, though we've heard that for quite a long time. Uh, <laughs> that has not changed for a while. Gross margin obviously falling from about 19.3% to 18.2%. A lot of expectation that this could be the trough, which will be very, uh, very, very important to Tesla. Let's just put it that way. And not only is this a very important and impressive uh, for, for Tesla, if this ends up being the trough, uh, but uh, I think it's not anywhere near as bad as feared. A lot of bears were looking at 14 to 16% uh, gross margin, and uh, we got 18.2. Yes, it's lower, uh, and it's certainly much lower than last year, but boy, oh boy, with interest rates where they are and the, the, the price cuts we saw in Q2, nowhere near as bad as feared. But what blows my mind is that somehow we were still able to go from 19.3% uh, to 18.2, but free cash flow was able to pop. 
That was impressive to me. If we jump over to the Q1 report, we actually have that same sheet right here. You can see this is Q2, this is Q1 right there, in case you want a, free fr a freeze frame. Uh, one of the things that you see in Q2 is you did lower that operating margin as well, the 9.6%. The operating margin we saw over here was 11.4, but you could also see that in the col columns before. But most importantly, that free cash flow there at the bottom, relatively low. If we go to the cash flow statement, just to try to get a little bit more of an insight into this, well, one of the contributors to that free cash flow, we could really just do that over on this side. There we go, do that on the latest report and pop into that free cash flow statement here. One of the contributors maybe was that you had less of a drop uh, in uh, your changes in operating assets and liabilities, net of biz comms. Uh, we, we, I mean, look at this sort of decline that we've had over here, right? From 2.1 to uh, 1.5 as a subtractor to cash, uh, operating cash and then only a 1.1 subtractor of cash here. So we could go into the actual quarterly report once it's filed and get a little bit more color on some of these details. But that really helped us prop up cash flow. Now, even if you didn't understand any of what I just said in the last 30 seconds, we could totally ignore that and we still wouldn't have been negative in free cash flow. So congratulations to Tesla. They really pulled off uh, preventing my personal biggest fear. Tooling of the Cybertruck progressing. Uh, so far, still expecting Q3 for a del an initial delivery event, but we're told they're still in testing and tooling for the Cybertruck. When we look at the actual balance sheet, we find that they increased their debt from about $5.9 billion to about $6.9 billion of debt. So about a $1 billion increase. I have to say, some part of me thinks this is just Elon trolling. <laughs> but uh, you do have $23 billion of cash versus $22.9 uh, billion in bills. So anybody who's walking around bragging about the $23 billion of cash at Tesla really got to line that up with the bills they got. Um, but it's okay, you know, I get it. And you got inventories as well. And yeah, 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 we can debate this all day long. Uh, so uh, thank you, by the way, Michael, for the shout out. Michael here uh, says, superb instant and real-time analysis. It finally got me to subscribe and you have been well worth it before this. A serious thank you. That's really nice of you to say. Really appreciate that. This is the perfect time for me to say, have you checked out those programs on Building Your Wealth yet? Where you could get this kind of real-time analysis every day in the course member live streams do it all for you. You get the lifetime access to all the archive as well, which is great because you could just search through all of the other analyses that we've done. But I do this basically every day. One of the reasons I personally like doing it every day is because I feel like I get better at it every single time I do it. Uh, and so I, uh, I really enjoy providing that value while also getting better at doing it all the time. Now, what do we think about uh, as a takeaway for Tesla here? Look, Personally, I think this is fantastic. My worst fears have been allayed. My worst fear was negative free cash flow and money raise. With the fact that we got, I'm gonna call this a relatively benign report, beat on EPS, miss on margin, but who cares that margin is still not in bear territory? Just wiping the sweat off the forehead. Next big takeaway, that solar industry might have a little bit more time to do some quantity building there. I don't know when solar is going to take off again, but I will put it this way. I think it is, and it is my opinion, not personalized advice for you, but it's my opinion that that could be one of the best industries to really be building your allocation as you start trimming from some of your big winners, because I think they'll be the next winners, whether that's when rates come down or whatever, who cares? Good news though, and why that relates to Tesla is because Tesla's in the solar industry as well. They do their own batteries. They do their own inverters after they fired Solar Edge, uh, and um, they've got an easy way to sell panels in conjunction with selling cars. Uh, with these hot summers, we're also anecdotally hearing from solar reps that we talk to that solar sales are actually increasing, but that's just not showing up yet at the Tesla numbers. So it makes me wonder, is Tesla perhaps prioritizing vehicle sales over solar? Who knows? But uh, we do know that the earnings call will be in about 40, 50 minutes. It's usually like an hour and a half long. Uh, and then of course, we'll have some insights on the Tesla earnings call later. But I will be streaming the earnings call later. As for now, thank you so much for being here, everyone. I think this is great news. Uh, this is uh, really, uh, uh, you know, again, short of like a bag of cash coming down from Jesus handed to Tesla. <laughs> this was pretty good. Uh, so this is the best we could have asked for, so I'm happy. 
Thank you so much for watching here and getting your news here. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone, and good luck. Now, I want you to know this. When it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced.